All right. Good evening, everyone. All right. Welcome to tonight's eighth grade parent open house. My name is Patrick Mulcahy. I am a social studies teacher here at Farmington High School. I will be functioning as the MC tonight. Um, hopefully the clip has ended for everyone and that everyone that was hoping to be in attendance tonight is here. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to our administrators to welcome you more formally and get things underway. So let's get that going. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mulcahy. And good evening to the families of the class of 2025. I think the last time I said that to you, I was standing in the Irving Robbins auditorium as you were getting ready for your other transition to a big new school. And that was your journey to Irving Robbins. Uh, I wish like many of us that we were sitting in person and enjoying um, a different presentation this evening, but nonetheless, we are excited to be here and welcome you and your families to Farmington High School. And so I'm Scott Hurwitz, I'm the principal of Farmington High School. On behalf of our administrative team, Lisa Kapsinski and Russ Christ, our assistant principals, and Mary Lundquist, our Dean of Students, who you'll have a chance to hear from this evening, along with our great building leadership team and all the faculty and staff here at FHS. Um, it's our pleasure to welcome you uh, to one of the many steps that you'll take as you get ready to send your eighth graders to Farmington High School. So as we get ready this evening, uh, we just want to send a quick reminder, Pat, if we can transition the slide there. Um, one thing that we'd like to do this evening is, is answer as many questions as possible. We know there must be many as you get ready to uh, make this step towards Farmington High School. And we wanna let you know that we're here to support you and work with you every step along the way. So tonight, if you do have any questions in a few moments, there's going to be a link uh, put into the chat function on Zoom here. And we invite you to use that link um, to click into it and ask any questions that you might have. And so we'll do a few things. Uh, throughout the evening, we'll work to answer those questions. Um, at the end of the night, the most pressing questions we'll, we'll answer in an open answer format. And then uh, following the presentation, we will post this video along with our questions or your questions and answers um, on our website. Additionally, if you think of something beyond tonight, um, we welcome you to reach out to any one of us um, that can best answer your question. And if you ask one of us um, and you're not sure who to ask, we'll certainly point you in the right direction and help and help answer those questions. We're excited to partner with you. And again, wanna welcome you to Farmington High School. This evening, we hope to share with you some of the great programs we started for the first 15 minutes um, with some of the many offerings and our clubs and activities program. You'll hear more about that this evening, along with our academic and social supports as well. You'll get a chance to meet our department leaders and, and get a chance to explore some of the great opportunities uh, for your children that, that await them here at Farmington High School. And so with that, Pat, we'll switch the slide again and, and just give a quick overview. We'll start um, with just some short remarks from our administrative team. We'll move into, um, some overviews of our different departments here at Farmington High School. And you'll also hear about the clubs, activities, and programs from some of our students here and get a snapshot of the transition that awaits uh, your children as they get ready to start their ninth grade year here at Farmington High School. Here at Farmington High School, if we can switch the slide again there, Mr. Mulcahy. Here at Farmington High School, we pride ourselves being one school, one community, one us. This year, we've added a little bit more to that, um, where we like to remind ourselves to be one safe school, one safe community, one healthy us. And we know um, how much hard work you and your students are putting in, along with the educators here in Farmington um, during this exceptionally hard time. Um, as we were reflecting as an administrative team eager to welcome you the, tonight, we reflected back that our last large in-person gathering here at Farmington High School was actually eighth grade parent night for our families last year um, around the beginning of February in between uh, some athletic events, um, but really our last uh, evening where we had lots of families and adults in the building was this night. And so we're hoping that we get to greet you in person next year to start our school year. But for now, um, we wanna acclimate you uh, through Zoom. And again, appreciate so many families making the time this evening to join us um, and learn more about the high school transition. Here at Farmington High School, uh, just like at Irving A. Robbins and Westwoods in your respective elementary schools, 
we're driven by our core beliefs here in Farmington. Uh, and these guide us in the work that we do with our students at Farmington High School as well. And so you'll see consistent patterns throughout your school experience. And we hope the same here at Farm Farmington High School. And really, again, driving home that we want to be one school, one community, and one us, where every student feels a strong sense of belonging and connection to their school and their community. And we're confident that your children will do the same and have a really successful transition here to Farmington High School. Here at FHS, if we go to the next slide, uh, we have over 150 enthusiastic staff members and faculty members who are excited to share their passion and creativity with your amazing students. Uh, this school year, we serve over uh, 1,200 students and are eager for our eighth graders to join um, next year as well in this transition to the high school. Our leadership team here at the high school is comprised of department leaders. Mr. Mulcahy, if we shift the slide there. Uh, and I'd like to just take a moment to thank them for being here this evening. Um, they're exceptional resources, great teachers and leaders who help work both uh, here at Farmington High School and throughout the district in their respective subject areas. I'd also like to thank our administrative team here. We work collectively together to support students and families both during their transition and throughout your four years here at Farmington High School. Um, and with that, I, I ask everybody just to take a moment. We'll start with Lisa Kapsinski, one of our assistant principals, and we're gonna uh, go through and just say hello so you can um, get to meet us quickly as well. Good evening, everybody. I'm Lisa Kapsinski. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to working with you and your children. Mr. Mulcahy, if we can just slide back to that previous slide. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andrew Miner. I'm the uh, Art and Technology Department Leader. I'm happy to uh, see you guys virtually. Hi, everyone. My name's Kate Martorelli. I'm the School Counseling Department Leader. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Amy Miller. I am the English Department Leader. Good evening, I'm Kelly Stoko. I'm the Information Literacy and Learning Technology Department Chair. Good evening, I'm Leslie Imsey. I am the K-12 Music Department Chair and we're really looking forward to welcoming our eighth graders to the high school. Hello, my name is Nicole Richmond. I'm the Social Studies Department Leader here at Farmington High School. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. I'm Stephanie pagano Cor. I'm the K-12 World Language Department Leader. Hi, my name is Russ Christ. I'm one of the Assistant Principals. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good evening. I'm Mary Lundquist. I am the Dean of Students. Um, welcome to the eighth grade parents. Good evening, my name is Amanda Roy and I'm the Health, PE and Wellness Department Leader, K-12. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Lanza, the Math and Business Department Leader. Welcome everyone, I'm Abigail Roy, I'm the Special Education Department Leader. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Shomo, I'm the Science Department Leader. All right, and we look forward to um, welcoming a new athletic director uh, as we start next school year. We'll have that information to the community later this spring and also want to welcome uh, Chris Loomis, our director of student activities, who, who you will meet a little bit later as well and hear much from during your course here at Farmington High School as well. And so all of us on the building leadership team work collaboratively together to make sure that our academic, social, and emotional programming here at Farmington High School um, meets the needs of your children. And we're all here to work with you as you transition to the high school uh, next school year. With that, I'm gonna introduce our Dean of Students again, Mrs. Mary Lundquist. And Mary is going to talk a little bit about our academic programming here at Farmington High School. Good evening and welcome to our eighth grade parents night. Before we get into more specific details about what your child can expect as an incoming freshman, I'd like to give you a bit of background on what we use as educators to help guide us in developing and implementing programs in the district and more specifically at Farmington High School. The mission of Farmington Public Schools is to enable all students to achieve academic and personal excellence, exhibit persistence effort and live as resourceful, inquiring and con contributing global citizens. 
In pursuit of this mission, we have defined these traits in our new vision of the Global Citizen documents. As you can see in the logo, these traits are self-aware individual, empowered learner, disciplined thinker, engaged collaborator, and civic-minded contributor. A side note on our logo, it was designed by our own Lindsay Fiedler, a senior at FHS with a passion for design. She worked in collaboration with Mrs. Wynn, our assistant superintendent, to come up with this logo that represents the vision of the global citizen. But more than the product, the development of this logo represents the very traits we want our students to develop as they go through our four years at Farmington High School. Next. These photos, and you can see from the photos that these are in the before times when nobody was wearing masks. So I just want you to know that we do practice social distancing at Farmington High School. These are old pictures. Um, these photos convey uh, some of the classroom experiences that illustrate our vision. You can see students working on a construction pro project for Habitat for Humanity, um, collaborating on a math problem, completing a chemistry lab, preparing a social studies debate and completing a close reading in an English class. So how do we think about operationalizing the vision of the global citizen? At the heart of it, we strive to develop engaged learners, students who take charge of their own learning. Next. Everything we do lives in one of these four domains, mastery-based learning, multiple flexible pathways, instructional innovation and systems of challenge and support support. I'll go through each briefly to give you an idea of how they work to give your student a high quality well rounded experience in their four years with us. Next. Okay, the first one is mastery based learning. Um, I think that Farmington has a very long history of well designed curriculum and instruction. Everything that we do we filter through this mastery-based learning sieve so that we're sure that we offer multiple and, and very formative and summative assessments for students. Um, and also that we focus on closing the gap between what stu students currently know and where they need to go next in order to achieve mastery of our standards. Next. We offer multiple flexible pathways for students. So I think, you know, you, you may have already had a chance to take a look at our program of studies and that gives you some sense about really the, the vast number of courses that your child can choose from um, that will move them closer toward the end of their high school career. Um, in addition to the, the offerings that are in the program of studies, one of the things that you may not notice because a lot of these are for older students, but I want your kids to have something to look forward to. We offer courses um, that will give students both high school and college credit. Um, we also offer independent study opportunities. And you'll hear a little bit later on a little bit more about our kind of end of high school experiences of Caps, Capstone and Aspire. Next. I think that Farmington is known for instructional innovation. If you go into our classrooms, you're going to see that our classrooms are student-centered. Um, they are often problem and project-based, and you'll see a real focus on student choice. So students are often um, given their choice in how they want to show what they know and are able to do. And I think in most of our lesson design, we promote the social construction of knowledge. Next, we have really high expectations for students at Farmington High School. Um, and sometimes for even the best students, that can be really daunting. Um, we find that most students don't sail through high school without encountering some level of challenge and that's by design. So we also design in systems of challenge and support so that students um, are able, able to overcome their obstacles when they encounter them in learning. So we have high quality instruction in the classroom, extra help after school. We have tutorials in all the major subject areas. And next year we'll have a dedicated challenge and support period every day for students. Next. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Lisa Kaps Kapsinski, who will talk in a little bit more detail about the transition from middle school to Farmington High School. Thank you, Mrs. Lundquist. 
Good evening, everybody. Um, so I am the lucky administrator that is one of the first adults to greet your students when they um, are introduced to our school on the eighth grade uh, student visits to Farmington High School. So um, that's an exciting afternoon for everyone. We really um, take great pride in making sure that that first time that students are with us, they get a sense of our community and the culture of possibility possibility that we work so hard to create here at Farmington High School. We'll spend some time that day talking about academic expectations. And so I have a group of peer ambassadors that are a panel of, of students that um, meet in small groups with your children and are able to ask questions, but also provide the students perspective on life here at Farmington High. So they'll share uh, some insights into what it's like to be a freshman and the academic classes that they're taking. They'll share all of the social um, interactions that kids can, in, can partake in while they're here, talking about clubs and sports, drama, um, athletics, any anything that really the students in the small groups are interested in beyond the classroom. And they'll also talk about how this is a place where we really do attend to emotions. And we want to make sure that kids feel welcome, they feel supported, and that they are respectful, resilient, and responsible. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna share with you a little bit of the nuts and bolts around the academic component of Farmington High School. When I meet with students, I often say to them, this is, you know, now the next four years are a time when we really are tracking what it is that you're studying so that you have a marketable transcript at the end of your four years. So as parents, you're gonna to wanna to have a sense of what are the credit requirements for graduation. So for the class of 2025, Students are required to have 25 total credits, nine credits in the humanities, so that's English, social studies, the fine visual arts, music and theater, nine credits in STEM, technology, engineering, and mathematics, two credits in PE wellness and health and safety, one in each of those domains, one world language credit with demonstrated level of world language proficiency, we measure that proficiency through the Farmington Language Standards Assessment at the end of level three. They'll have to engage in one vision of the global citizen learning experience here at the high school. That's our Aspire offerings or our capstone offerings. And you'll probably pay more attention to that as your children become um, you know, juniors and seniors, but uh, that is the culminating event of the four years here. And then in addition to these requirements, students can take three electives beyond the, the required graduation standards. Additionally, students will need to demonstrate a, uh, uh, a level of proficiency in literacy, mathematics, and science, and we do that through performance standards. So all along the way, they'll be well supported. Our classes prepare them for these, and uh, we have a plethora of offerings so that students can dabble in all sorts of pathways to really find what interests them and uh, explore their passions. Next slide, please. So next year, one of the things I share with your children is that they will probably be getting on the bus between 6 and 6.15 each morning. There's a collective groan in the audience when I say that. Um, but the day does start early. It starts here around 7.30. And um, our, our schedule for next year will most likely look like this. So it'll be an eight block A, B day schedule. Each block, um, or they're articulated as periods here so, so that you know what I'm talking about. Each block will be roughly 80 minutes long. We'll have a 30 minute lunch block in the middle of the day. And as you can see, we have an embedded challenge and support block so that students who wanna challenge themselves can meet with their teachers to do so. Students who might need extra support can meet with teachers, tutors, peers to do so, uh, and students who just want to work on their homework or prepare their problem or projects um, can do so in a supported way during the school day. So we're excited about this. You can see there's not a ton of transitions during the day, so the pace is manageable. And um, uh, you know, I, I think that 
the, the offerings of an A day and a B day uh, offer some variety throughout the week for students. So what might a typical day look like? Yes, next slide, thank you. So every freshman um, more or less has to take the same core set of courses. So you'll see here that there is math, social studies, science, English, world language, there's PE coupled with wellness, uh, there's room for an elective, and we highly encourage freshmen to take a study hall. We do find that the ninth grade year sets them up for success all throughout the rest of the years of high school. So we're very uh, thoughtful in ensuring that students have time uh, to really work on the work while they're here in the building and access all of the resources so that they can be fully successful. So that's an overview of the nuts and bolts. I'm gonna to transition to Mr. Crest, my other partner, our assistant principal, who's gonna talk a little bit more about school life. Hi again, everyone. One school, one community, one us is a saying that students will hear or see on a daily basis here at Farmington High School. It's our mission to create a strong sense of belonging and community for every student that comes to our hallways. Next. Thank you. You can stay informed about all things happening at FHS in a variety of ways. Um, some of these ways you're already familiar with, like PowerSchool, the parent portal, um, our Friday folders that we use weekly to, to email home a lot of the information that's happening here. Um, our Farmington High School website can also be found through the FPSCT website. Um, almost all, pretty much all of our teachers, all of them now um, in uh, COVID times are using Google Classroom um, to communicate with students and can also add parents so that parents can get weekly updates on assignments and different things that are posted there. And finally, you can use social media to follow um, our different accounts to get a look inside um, what's happening our, inside our walls. Next, please. You can stay informed of all things FHS in a variety of ways. Follow our social media accounts for an inside look at what's happening here in and out of the classrooms. Outside of our traditional class time, there are many ways that we both challenge and support students on their academic journey. Freshman seminar is a scheduled time with school counselors to aid in the transition to FHS. Right now, we're offering Connect to Challenge and Support Block every other day where students can meet with teachers or, or collaborate with other students. Teachers are also available after school daily from 225 to 258. And this year, they can be accessed virtually with Google Meets in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. We also offer tutorials in core subjects. And um, right now, SPA is not up and running because of um, our after school is not as open as it normally is. Um, but SPA runs usually every day after school um, and it is supported by a content area teacher um, and other uh, tutors in the, in the building. Next, please. I'm going to hand it over to um, Mr. Loomis, our Teacher of the Year and Student Activities Director. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Christ. Um, I am very fortunate to uh, be the Student Activities Director at Farmington High School. And uh, one thing I hope for all of your children is that they take part in one club, activity, organization, or honor society. Um, sports, music, or art before they leave here uh, after their four years. We have um, amazing teachers who are willing to be advisors. So you're gonna see there's over 75 clubs and activities. Uh, and for example, last week, we just approved a couple more, including stock market and cryptology. So if your son or daughter looks at the 70 plus clubs and doesn't see one that meets uh, their passions, have them meet with me and we can talk about it. Um, next slide, please. Even though uh, COVID has uh, held us back from doing certain things this year, our students are resilient. 
Um, we were still able to do a few fundraisers. And here you're gonna see pictures from students doing a toy drive around the holidays uh, from our uh, National Honor Society students. And our junior class held a coat drive. Both were extremely successful given the conditions. And um, you know, I think it just speaks to uh, our students, our advisors, and how our town is still trying to push through during such difficult times. And so there'll be more events coming up in the spring and uh, please be on the lookout for those uh, in, the, in the coming months. Next slide, please. If you wanna stay involved and see what's going on at the high school, um, both on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at FHS Activities One would be a great follow. Um, our students all year round and all the clubs are always doing something and uh, it really is inspiring to see what they do and as parents if you want an inside look I think it's great to follow not only uh, this account uh, but other uh, student accounts as well to see what they're doing. Uh, top you'll see our social justice council here at Farmington High School and then our class of 2021 20, student council. Um, these are some of our um, best student leaders here at Farmington High School. And uh, during this year, they're doing a lot to uh, make it such a special year for, for everybody. And so one of the biggest fundraisers uh, that we're doing um, for charity is Spirithon. And uh, Mr. Mulcahy, who's hosting this, uh, helps run that every year. And a lot of teachers uh, take part in it as well, and students. And so when you get this presentation, there is a hyperlink there for FHS Spearathon. There are a lot of teachers and administrators who are willing to uh, help raise money. For example, Dr. Hurwitz and uh, Mr. Christ are willing to do a polar plunge if we can reach the goal of $1,000 as a community. You can see right now we've raised $736. We only need a little bit more. Um, so if you could really consider donating, even if it's a few dollars to get to that thousand, we would love to see them have to take the polar plunge. Um, and so this is coming up in a couple weeks and more information will be sent out uh, to the community. And we hope that you're willing to donate to theirs and the other uh, adventures that FHS teachers are doing to raise money for Spirithon. And next I will throw it back over to Dr. Hurwitz. Well, thank you for that plug too, Mr. Loomis. That was uh, very thoughtful and generous of you. Uh, the word from our friends at Irving Robbins are they want to participate with us as well. Um, you know, really just, you know, trying to capture what you just saw. We, we want to encourage your kids to get involved, to take a risk, to try something new, to try a new course. Uh, there are so many offerings here to engage in. So really encourage them um, to, to try something new, not just based on what their friends are taking or, or where they think they'll be connected, but what, what calls them. And, um, and we hope that they'll do that. Um, and certainly if they're reticent right now, we know that once they get here, we'll continue to encourage them and find opportunities for them to explore those multiple pathways. Um, it really is about authentic learning here at Farmington High School. And um, if, if you do end up following us on Twitter, you'll see recently, um, you know, a shout out to Mr. Miner and, and the art department, um, our new Aspire courses, one of our pilots that just started this year and will absolutely be available when your kids come forward it was an installation art project. And um, if you have a chance to visit Rebel Dog Coffee here in town, you'll see the amazing work, again, for an authentic audience, a real world, real purpose activity in which our students absolutely excelled. And we're just so proud of them. And those are the kinds of experiences um, we know that your children will have when they come here as well. Uh, Mr. Mulcahy, if you give one click there and then move us forward, please. And again, you know, our school is a special place. We've certainly been challenged. We've been challenged this evening um, as we continue to explore the world of technology. As, as you all know, it's, it's, um, it hasn't been easy, but I couldn't be prouder of, of the way our kids and our community um, and our team here and, and around the district continues to respond to these challenges. Uh, we've come together now, even as far apart as we have been. And we're hopeful that as your children come here, they'll be able to be um, close, not only, not only in the opportunities that they have, but also in their physical space again, um, as we move forward. But regardless of what those, the future holds for us in, in, um, in the short term here, as we work through COVID, we're excited to welcome the students as they move forward here um, towards the spring and then into next school year as well. Mr. Mulcahy, if we shift the slide, um, I do want to just call your attention. I, I know Mr. Loomis gave his plug for the, uh, for the polar plunge there. A couple other, um, you know, really key um, community-wide um, 
points of focus that directly impact the high school and our community as a whole are also things that we want to make you aware of. One is the Farmington High School Building Committee is um, active and moving forward currently. And so we encourage you to visit the website, which is up on the screen. Uh, additionally, you should have all received uh, a, a mailer recently, a newsletter um, with updates on where the building project is, along with a survey to complete. We encourage all families and community members to complete that survey and get that back to the committee um, as the town council will be reviewing that in the near future. And um, we'll continue to advocate um, for the great opportunities that this committee um, has in store for the high school and the entire community. Additionally, um, if we click the slide there, Mr. Mulcahy, as we're very excited about this as well, um, I, I wanna shout out Mr. Miner again and the unified art, um, the, the, our unified art class, they, uh, they helped create this. I don't know if it's GIF or GIF. Um, I've heard both, but it's a, a, this moving image here. Um, so these are some of the ideas from our unified art class, but um, we, we look forward to continuing to engage in the conversation around the Farmington High School mascot. Um, currently, the Board of Education has charged the committee with moving forward to identify a new mascot. Our next meeting, or really our first meeting of phase two, is next Wednesday. Those meetings are open to the public. I'm sure Mrs. Greeter will have that link in your Friday update this week, and we, and we continue to include those in the Friday folder, along with the community mailings around updates with the progress. You're also welcome to visit the Farmington High School Ad Hoc Committee website. You can see a screenshot there of the, of the front page. Um, but I do believe that the committee will be encouraging the community to submit their ideas. Um, and this is both students and, and adults alike to what they think will help represent this great school and this great community uh, now and moving forward. We're so proud to be a part of this and um, encourage you to take part in this as well. We're excited uh, to see what all of our students come up with. Um, and at the end of the day, it'll be the choice of our students here um, on where we go with this moving forward. And we're excited about that as well. So please stay tuned to that and, and reach out or engage in the process as we move forward. Uh, with that, I wanna introduce you to, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Christ, who's gonna introduce us to a few more folks here that you and your students will get to know um, over their time at Farmington High School. Thanks, Dr. Hurwitz. Uh, um, first of all, I did want to mention that um, I put a new link in the chat and you should be able to access the form to ask questions now. And um, I will do it again in a couple of minutes as well. Um, again, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have um, throughout the presentation tonight. And there will be different forms for us to um, respond to those questions, including hopefully some live tonight. Um, and we'll also post a Q&A um, and then if you have other questions, feel free to reach out directly to the school. Um, usually in the spring, uh, we will have all the eighth graders come through our building. That obviously looked a lot different last spring. And uh, while we are hopeful, we are planning for, um, you know, being able to do something virtually for eighth graders again, um, again this spring. Um, one of the components of that will be this virtual tour of the building. And while this is really ta tailored to stu towards students, we wanted to share about 90 seconds of the video with you tonight. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Ms. Martinez, who is our journalism teacher, and also wanted to thank Colin, Nick, and Joey, who helped to put this together. So um, Mr. Mulcahy, if you can roll um, the first 90 seconds of this video, that would be great. Enjoy. What's up guys, I'm Cullen and we're gonna do a nice little tour of the school today. Right now we're at the student's entrance and uh, welcome in, welcome to the crypt. All right, so we start off here with the attendance office, got some really nice ladies in there. Um, they'll help you with everything from absences, tardies, um, pretty much everything attendance goes in there. So. Let's go down here now. All right, so this is the 900 hall. It is home from everything science and math offices, as well as a lot of your classes. It will have your, it will not have your science classes in here, but you'll have everything math, English, social studies, all in this hall. This is math tutorial. Um, yeah, so it's a great resource if you're having trouble with math, go here. Let's, uh, oh, 
How you doing? We're just doing a video. Yeah. You want to wave hi to the camera? Yeah. Hi. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything I can help? Oh, no, we're good. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. How was helpful? All right. Um, and then we're over to the science um, tutorial. Uh, so Nick, basically, yeah, basically, if you need help with any science thing or yeah, stuff like that, you just come here. Great teacher, too. Amazing. My name is Joey. Thanks, Pat. You can move on to that next slide. So again, that was just a, a sneak peek um, at an inside look of uh, our um, daily going on here at Farmington High School. And um, really from the eyes of students, um, really, again, it's meant for students to kind of see what it's like and to meet some people um, to be able to visualize themselves here at Farmington High School. Um, you know, this, uh, before we get going to the, the, the most important part of our presentation tonight, which is um, the presentations by department leaders, I first wanted to thank our department leaders um, who uh, put a lot of work into um, creating informational videos for you by department. Um, and they're going to give you some insight into the experiences and offerings that we have for ninth graders and that your students will experience next year. Um, I'll also put a link to the program of studies into the chat so you can take a deeper dive into our program of studies. Um, I wanted to also thank um, Andy Marshall um, and Evan Foreman who helped to put this video together um, and also uh, Chris Loomis who is on your student activities director um, and um, Ms. Martinez, MJ Martinez who helped to put so in between the department leaders you're going to get to meet some of our students who are going to talk about their experience experience finding community and a sense of belonging here at Farmington High School, both in and out of the classroom. So I hope you enjoy the video. Um, it is about 30, uh, 35 minutes long, um, and it will really take a deep dive into um, our classes here. And, um, and then we'll come back at the end for some Q&A. So um, please enjoy the video. Hello, I am Andrew Miner, department leader of the Fine and Applied Arts Department. I represent both the Tech Ed and Visual Art programs. We offer electives that satisfy both STEM and Humanities graduation requirements, as well as classes for the Aspire requirement. In both the Visual Arts and New Media, which is making art on computers, we have a robust selection of different courses that embrace and support dedicated artists, as well as students who are interested in trying something new or lack confidence in their art abilities. Looking at this graphic, we see at the top those classes that your rising ninth graders should consider taking. Students are often counseled to take one elective that would extend over the course of the academic uh, year. Among our fine art classes, that would include Art 1, which is a survey course of different art medium like drawing, printing, um, painting, etc. They could also take Unified Art, which is also a four-year course. Students could also choose to sign up for two of our semester long or half year courses like film photo, digital photo, uh, 3D design, ceramics, and they could take these in the fall and then take the second level courses in the spring, or they could mix and match. In the applied arts, students would sign up for either stagecraft or core. Stagecraft is a course designed to uh, build sets for our fall and spring dramatic performances or CORE, which is a year-long introductory course that lets students try uh, different wood and metal fabrication techniques, an introduction to CAD, residential construction, and cabinetry. After CORE, students can go on to take um, Automotive Tech, Construction 1, Construction 2, Alternative Energy Vehicle Design. Students who choose to pursue multiple art electives will find advanced classes in photography, studio art, digital design, animation, and game design. Students can take AP Portfolio their senior year, which is a great way to demonstrate rigor on their transcript and dedication to their passion. Any combination of our courses will set students up for success in AP Portfolio, which is a college board class that may result in college credit. The art department also supports a great community with our art club, fashion club, photography club, and National Art Honor Society. Students interested in joining our honor society will need to complete one and a half credits in a fine or applied art class. Students interested in studying the fine arts in college or want to set themselves apart from other candidates to unrelated fields of study should consider making a portfolio of their work to include with their college application by taking multiple art electives over the course of their FHS career. 
Students who enjoy working with their hands or have an interest in pursuing careers in the trades will find their home with Mr. Corrigan and Mr. Teravainen. They get to use industrial equipment to problem solve real world issues while still enjoying the benefits of a comprehensive high school education. For example, in alternative energy vehicle design, students have the opportunity to design, build, and race vehicles at Lime Rock Racetrack. There are also opportunities to serve the community through work with Habitat for Humanity and Rebuild Hartford. Students who pursue careers in tech ed related fields do not accrue significant college debt while still allowing those individuals to enter lucrative fields. In sum, the Fine and Applied Art Department has a place for your child. And our former students have gone on to be successful artists, designers, builders, and technicians, but we have also helped diversify students' academic backgrounds to find success in unrelated fields. I look forward to meeting your students next year and thank you for your attention. Hello, my name is Eddie Mullock, varsity debater and officer for the FHS debate team. Debate and other forms of forensic competition develop skills to transfer well into school, career, and personal life. Debate helps students develop valuable speaking, listening, and analytic skills. It places a premium on quick thought and precise expression. In fact, many noted public figures are former high school and college debaters. However, at FHS, we approach this task in a cooperative spirit that recognizes the overriding goal still to benefit the students. Our debate format encourages collaboration as students work in pairs and allows debaters to practice constructive speeches, cross-examinations, and rebuttals. My name is Kelly Stoko, and I am the K-12 Information Literacy Department Chair, as well as the Aspire and Capstone Coordinator for the Farmington Public Schools. As your student enters Farmington High School as a freshman, the library becomes an integral location for sources of important information throughout their high school career. Besides myself, we have Mrs. Johnson, who is a full-time library media specialist, Mr. Marshall, who is a full-time technology integration specialist, and Mrs. Manos, our full-time library clerk. The Farmington High School Library website can be accessed from our school's website. This site allows for users to look through our large collection of books, graphic novels, and magazines, as well as over 18 databases for research. You can also find technology resources to help navigate applications and platforms. As your student enters their junior and senior year, they will be required to take an Aspire or Capstone course to fulfill the graduation requirement of one credit in the Vision of the Global Citizen Exhibition of Learning. These courses are designed for students to articulate their learning of the VOGC skills through a personalized learning experience. The library and technology staff at Farmington High School will help oversee your student through this experience. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Lindsay Fiedler. I'm a senior at FHS and also vice president of National Honor Society. I've been involved with Art Club for all four years of my high school career when I was formally president my junior year of high school. Art Club is a place for students to come together and create art for about an hour and a half after school, about three times a month. Our club in aims to invite all students, no matter their artistic skill level. Each meeting, we have a fun and exciting activity planned for everybody to join in. And our club is a safe space where you will find some of the most creative and innovative thinking students. There are three possible math courses for your student to take as an incoming ninth grader, as shown here. We've transitioned to a half year geometry course and three semester algebra two pathway to allow students to learn algebra two concepts in their freshman and sophomore year. This also allows students to enter into math electives earlier in their high school career. Students who are interested in the applications of mathematics beyond what they see in their math courses have opportunities in engineering, business, and art. We have an art and architecture and geometry course where students will apply previously learned and new geometric concepts to create their own art pieces and analyze historical architecture. Students can take personal finance and earn half math or half business credit. Additionally, we offer a sports analytics capstone that connects business and statistics content standards. Our instruction, curriculum, and assessments are aligned to the National Content Area, Vision of the Global Citizen, and National Council for Teachers of Mathematics Math Practice Standards. Our goal is for all students to be able to think critically about math content and be able to apply it. We give a real-world purpose for many of the skills that we teach and require students to collaborate to uncover the why behind mathematical concepts. This shows in our daily lessons as well as our assessments. Teachers of the same course design common lessons and common assessments and follow the same online syllabus which students have access to. We use many technology tools including Desmos, Khan Academy, Socrative, Edpuzzle, and GeoGebra. 
We also require the use of specific Texas Instruments graphing calculators in all math classes. We have some loaner calculators that students can borrow for the school year, which are offered on a first come first serve basis. We have a few options in the event that your student does need some extra challenge or support. Teachers are available before and after school. Additionally, we have a full-time math tutor available in room 805 every day, every period. There are also math intervention teachers that can go into classes to work with small groups of students or work with students one-on-one -on -one during a free period. Lastly, there is a math teacher two days a week in the library after school until 345. The business department offers a computer applications course for freshmen that gives students the opportunity to become Microsoft Office certified in Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. They also offer marketing and accounting. We have two business courses that allow students to be dual enrolled at Tunksis Community College to earn college credit. Those are Comprehensive Business Topics Honors and Personal Finance. E-commerce is a culminating business capstone where students design their own business and prototype and present it at a statewide expo. Hi, my name is Jack Dunphy and I'm a senior from the Farmington High School Drama Department. Typically, our school puts on two productions each year, a fall play and a spring musical. I highly encourage all students to check out the Shakespeare competition when they arrive to the high school. This was a remarkable opportunity I had to actually compete at the state level through Shakespeare monologues and sonnets through the art of performing. I highly encourage all students to check out the theater department. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amy Miller. I am the chair of the English department, and I am thrilled to welcome you here tonight to eighth grade parent night and to welcome your students up to the high school next year. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what your student will expect next year as a freshman at Farmington High School and also all throughout all four years in English. So what you can anticipate is that during their freshman year in high school, all of our students will experience the same seven graduation standards that they experienced at IAR when they were called critical standards. The language of these standards, reading comprehension, reading interpretation, argument, writing narrative, writing process, inquiry and research, and speaking and listening do not change. The language stays the same, as do most of our performance indicators. What is different is that your students will be facing increasing complexity as they are exposed to these standards um, throughout all four years here at Farmington High School. How we achieve that is by um, our two large foundational heterogeneously grouped classes that we have our freshman and our sophomore year. As you can see, all ninth graders enter into English 100H, which is a heterogeneously grouped freshman class then they move to 200H for their 10th grade year. The idea behind this is that all students are exposed to rigor with um, support embedded into that class to be exposed to a wide variety of different types of reading experiences and writing experiences, as well as speaking and listening experiences. We want students to hone in on their strengths and their areas for improvement, and then to be able to choose with more confidence the best choice for themselves when they are 11th graders and 12th graders where as you can see, we have many more options for our students um, as they enter into the upperclassmen years. Now we understand that um, hearing this might fill many of you with excitement and might fill many of you with apprehension about how your unique students' needs will be met in the English class. And that's why I wanted to highlight a few of our systems of support and challenge that we have embedded into our courses in the English department. Um, one support we're really excited about is our student staffed writing center. It's called the Writer's Block. We have a collection of juniors and seniors every year who elect to take the Writing Center Fellowship course to become trained in Writing Center pedagogy and how to best deliver student support. That's open all throughout the school day as well as at school. It's staffed by a certified English teacher as well as all of our student tutors who can provide one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring uh, to students to help them both improve on specific writing assignments, but also to grow as writers. That's one of many supports we offer in the English department. Uh, one thing our teams are very skilled at is those skill-focused extra help sessions um, where we pick a specific thing that students need to work on and offer an extra help session by a series of teachers that students are getting additional help, not just from their own classroom teacher, but from other teachers on a grade level team. We also are constantly encouraging our students to reach for more challenge, 
offering differentiated readings as appropriate for student skill level, um, varied assessment measures so students are challenged in new and exciting ways, as well as opportunities for them to get their writing out into the world through publication and other student writing contests. Again, I'm thrilled to welcome you and your student to Farmington High School, and please do not hesitate to reach out should you have any questions. Hi there, I'm Daphne Salamolo. I'm here as a representative of the eSports Club. eSports is a term that describes the world of competitive, organized video gaming. Competitors from different leagues or teams face off in popular team-oriented video game titles. Like traditional sports, it fosters a solid sense of team building, collaboration, communication, and dedication. It provides a place for students with common interests to work together and strive to become better and build their skills in a safe and healthy environment. We also compete within our club, against other high schools throughout the state, and even nationally. Welcome to Farmington High School. My name is Leslie Imsey, and I am the music department chair. We regularly celebrate our students' successes on our social media. We have Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. At Farmington High School, you have so many choices. With over 20 music courses, students can fulfill their graduation requirements for the humanities, STEM, capstone, aspire, and extra elective credits over the four years. The music department offers opportunities in volunteerism for community service, innovative performances, you can belong to our music honor society, and you can qualify for the many leadership positions. In normal circumstances, our department travels every two years. Our students receive state awards for performing, composing, and for music leadership. Last year, our seniors received 25 scholarships for being a member of the music department. And we also had students in music internships and also summer jobs. For the freshman year course offerings, we have concert band, concert strings, treble choir, bass choir, and then two one semester courses, discovering world music and arranging with guitar. As you know, when you make music, you're collaborating with your peers. At Farmington High School, we also have students who create innovative performances, making connections with social justice, partnerships with their community, and developing global citizenship. The music department often performs for the school, in our town, and at nearby colleges. We have the highest number of state and regional awards of any school in the area. And our students regularly receive college scholarships celebrating their talents. As a member of our department, you will belong to a community of friends and teachers that you will enjoy throughout your Farmington High School years. Hello everyone, my name is Seth Frank and I'm the secretary of the FHS robotics team. When you think of robotics, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is engineering. And this is a key part of our team as we design, build, and code a robot each year to perform tasks. But spreading the message of STEAM across our community is just as important too, by doing things like running fun activities for younger kids and even mentoring the younger robotics teams. There's so much to do in our team from engineering, outreach, business, art, and more. You're bound to find a place on the team that's exciting for you and also truly prepares you for the real world. Come join the fun. Hi, my name is Rebecca Shomo. I'm the science department leader here at Farmington High School. Our instruction curriculum and assessments are aligned to the next generation science standards, also known as NGSS. Each lesson is designed with the three dimensions of the NGSS in mind. First, there's the practices is what students do, such as asking questions and carrying out investigations. The second is content, what students know, such as the interdependent relationships in an ecosystem, the cross-cutting concepts, 
how students think, such as patterns and cause and effect. The learning targets for each lesson include a practice along with content. For example, I can evaluate data to identify how a disruption in the biochemical pathway leads to decreased ATP production. The cross-cutting concept of cause and effect would be connected to this lesson on ATP production. The science graduation requirement is three credits, at least one life science and one physical science. The sequence of science courses for Farmington High School students is physics, chemistry, biology. Students also have the option to take several different science electives, which can count toward the required STEM electives. As you can see from the slide, we have a wide variety of elective courses that students can choose from. Given all the electives we have, you may be wondering what the ninth grade elective offerings are. Currently, the two electives offered for ninth grade students include Project Lead the Way Intro to Engineering Design and a Computer Science course. Project Lead the Way is an American nonprofit organization that develops STEM curriculum. Students who take Introduction to Engineering Design have the opportunity to complete a four year pathway in courses around engineering. Performance on the Project Lead the Way end of course assessments may result in students receiving college credit. In computer science, there are opportunities for students to take a computer science course each year of high school. A question I often receive is what is the difference between college prep physics and honors physics? Both courses cover the same content, but the honors curriculum focuses on the math skills and the college prep course is more conceptual. Recommendation by the eighth grade science teacher is done in consultation with the math teacher in order to ensure students are appropriately placed. But it is important to note that being enrolled in college prep physics does not prevent you from being recommended for honors chemistry sophomore year. Teacher recommendations are based on performance in the current course students are taking. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Hi, my name is Jerry Zhang. I am a current senior at Farmington High School, and I'm also a co-captain of the Science Bowl Club. Science Bowl is a quiz bowl style competition where your team faces off against another team and it's tested on a variety of science concepts. So why did I choose Science Bowl? I joined because I love science and I love competing. However, when I joined, I realized it was much more than just that. If you love science and you want to compete and you want to join a community of curious scholars, consider joining Science Bowl. Good evening, my name is Nicole Richmond. I am the social studies department leader here at Farmington High School. Welcome to eighth grade parents night. We are so looking forward to having your students join us next year. Ninth grade students at Farmington High School enroll in World History One Honors. World History One Honors is a heterogeneously grouped course. It's taught with a rough chronology, but mostly focusing on thematic issues of history that are persistent across time and place. That allows us to emphasize how students can transfer historical themes to modern context. For example, students evaluate the role of religion in shaping human history, and they also consider the role that religion continues to play today in how people interact with each other. This is a heterogeneously grouped course, and we have many opportunities for students for support and challenge. We work with a special education teacher and a literacy specialist to ensure that all students' needs are met in the classroom. We also have a number of teachers who are uh, trained in advanced placement coursework on the World History One team. We know that approximately 80% of our students go on to take AP US history in their junior year. And we begin that rigorous work and that skill building right here in World History 1H. In this course, as well as in all of our other courses, students are assessed on social studies graduation standards. We have three skill-based standards, historical source analysis, analysis, argument writing, and inquiry, and four content standards, history, geography, economics, and citizenship. You'll see these standards represented as learning targets and categories in your power school grade books. 
While all students take the same course freshman year, there's many opportunities afterwards to enjoy all of the offerings the social studies department has. This is a quick snapshot from the program of studies of the courses available to students 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. If you have any questions about ninth grade or any of our social studies offerings, please feel free to reach out to me using the contact information on the initial slide. Thank you and have a great evening. Hi, my name is Dylan St. James and I'm a member of the Farmington High School Music Department. Joining is as easy as signing up for a class and I fit it right into your schedule just like any other class you'll take in high school. I personally love my music class because I'm able to relax and play my instrument and enjoy and appreciate music with my friends and teachers. Additionally, if you're part of the music department, you have the chance to perform at venues across the state and even the country. We went to Disney two years ago and I had a blast. I hope you can make music with us soon. Good evening, my name is Amanda Roy and I'm the K through 12 Health, Physical Education and Wellness Department Leader. This is my first year as the Department Leader here at Farmington High School. And prior to this, I taught health and PE at Irving Robbins Middle School. I likely had your son or daughter last year in one of my seventh grade health classes, and I look forward to seeing them again as incoming ninth graders. Our wellness curriculum is aligned with Shape America's national PE and health standards, as well as Farmington Public School's vision of a global citizen. Our department has eight graduation standards, which include motor skill performance, responsible behavior, accessing wellness information, goal setting and planning, analyzing internal and external influences, communication and advocacy skills, wellness concepts, and decision making. In addition, we incorporate social and emotional learning into our curriculum by teaching students social and emotional skills and behaviors that will help them succeed in all areas of life. Next year, your ninth grader will take a semester long course called Wellness 9. This course includes one quarter of physical education and one quarter of health education. The physical education component of Wellness 9 focuses on understanding how having a growth mindset can lead to higher levels of performance. Students explore concepts in various game, fitness, and group problem solving environments. The health component of this course focuses on the interrelationship of physical, emotional, and social wellness. Students explore the concepts of self-awareness and self-responsibility and how they impact their own wellness. In 10th grade, your child will take a semester-long course of Wellness 10. This course includes a quarter of health education and a quarter of physical education. Junior year students take personal wellness, which is a semester long health education course. And finally, during senior year, your child will take one elective, which is a semester long physical education course. Hi, I'm Ricky Podgorski. I'm the editor in chief and lead anchor of the 905 News. And this is journalism at AB. The journalism program is a hands-on, student-driven course that gives students the opportunity to explore journalistic fields such as broadcast, social media, and written. The newsroom is a special environment where students work together to help build the FHS Voice newspaper and 905 News broadcast. On top of our physical paper, we also work on social media. We have our Instagram platforms, Twitter platforms, and an array of our websites and other digital platforms. We like to post on social media and stuff that happens around the school. Check us out at FHS underscore voice on Instagram. Good evening. I'm Stephanie pagano Core, and I'm the K-12 World Language Department Leader. And I'd like to give you a brief overview of our high school program so you know what to expect in the next four years. The mission of our program is for students to develop the knowledge and skills needed to communicate in another language and to develop the cultural competency necessary to become compassionate global citizens. All of our courses are conducted primi primarily in the target language and provide students with the opportunity to communicate with one another in the target language in the context of performance-based tasks. For example, students debate, interview, role play, create podcasts and scripts for short plays, and students engage with authentic media to explore the products, practices, and perspectives of the different cultures and communities connected to the target languages. All of our Spanish and French courses address the four graduation standards of speaking, writing, listening, and reading. In order for students to graduate, they must earn one credit in a world language class. And in addition, they must meet standard on the Farmington Language Standards Test or the FLST, which is an assessment given in French or Spanish at the end of level three honors, which is the course that most students will take in their freshman year. 
As you can see, we offer levels one through AP in French and Spanish, and these are the two languages that are connected to our graduation requirement and the FLST. While there are many different pathways for students to meet standard, um, a typical one is for students in ninth grade, so those are the students who have successfully completed grade eight French or Spanish at IAR. Um, those students would take French or Spanish three honors as a ninth grader, and it is in that course where they would take the FLST. Following that, students could take four or four honors in 10th grade. As 11th graders, they could take French or Spanish five or five honors, and then French or Spanish six honors or AP as 12th graders. We also offer Latin as an elective, and um, our Latin program offers students the opportunity to continue with Latin through their four years here at FHS, and they have the opportunity to receive UConn credit via a uh, Latin five honors course or an ECE course. For students who have already met the world language requirement, um, so these would be students who have successfully completed the FLST in French or Spanish, they could take American Sign Language, um, and we also offer an Aspire course called The Art, the Myth, and the Museum. We have many opportunities for challenge and support. All of our teachers are available before and after school for support. Um, Teachers are available in SPA 230 in the library. In addition, we have tutorials run by Language Honor Society students, and we offer an FLST Summer Institute for students who need support meeting standard on the FLST. And in addition, we have many differentiated resources on Google Classroom to help students um, learn at their targeted level. We also have many enrichment opportunities for students who continue with French or Spanish um, and Latin into their junior and senior years here at FHS. We have honors societies in French, Spanish, and Latin, um, and also we offer the um, opportunity for students to earn the State of Connecticut Seal of Biliteracy by taking the apple um, in Spanish or French. So I know this is a lot of information. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. I very much look forward to welcoming you and your child here to Farmington High School next year. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ayam Mohammed, and today I'll be talking about Social Justice Club and some of the main events that we hold and what exactly we do. So I'm the representative for Muslim Student Union in the council, the Social Justice Council that we have. But in the club itself, one of the main events that we have is Social Justice Week, which is a week where we present on a lot of social justice issues such as in white privilege, black feminism, um, homophobia, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism. But basically, Social Justice Club is just a safe environment where students can feel as though their identities are respected and they're heard and they truly feel like they are understood in that environment. Good evening. My name is Kate Martorelli, and I'm the school counseling department leader here in Farmington. I'm excited to share with you tonight some valuable information related to program planning and course selection as you prepare for your eighth grader to transition to the high school. First, we are very excited to share with you our newly created Farmington High School Program of Studies website. Here you will have access to many resources to use while supporting your student in researching and selecting courses for next year, including this year's program of studies, elective course options for freshmen, and how-to instructions for selecting courses in PowerSchool. School counselors also conduct program of studies and course selection lessons in eighth grade classrooms this month, where students will have the opportunity to learn more about Farmington High School, this year's program of studies, and ask questions. Additionally, I'd like to share with you tonight a traditional ninth grade schedule, which includes the following required courses. One credit of English, all ninth graders take English 100H. One credit of math, following the math sequence that your student is currently enrolled. One credit of science, either physics college prep or physics honors. One credit of social studies, all ninth graders take world history one honors one credit of world language, following the world language sequence that your student is currently enrolled, half credit of a physical education and wellness course, all ninth graders take wellness nine, and finally, one to two elective credits of your student's choice. Lastly included here, 
you will find your next steps as parents guardians of current eighth graders. Please review the program of studies website, course descriptions, and elective options. Please review course recommendations, a new feature in PowerSchool this year, noting your students' teacher recommendations from their IAR teachers. Under class registration in PowerSchool, please request a minimum of 6.5 credit hours and a maximum of 7.5 credit hours, including alternate electives by February 12th. Please select one to two credits of electives plus alternates. Farmington High School also hosts a freshman orientation in August and all students will receive information about this year's orientation during the summer. Lastly, and also important to know, every freshman at Farmington High School participates in a weekly freshman seminar with their school counselor at the beginning of the school year, which is designed primarily to support all students in their transition to high school. As always, school counselors are here to help. Please contact, contact us with any questions, and thank you and best wishes for a great rest of your school year. Hi everyone, my name is Sonali Patel and this is my third year as class president on FHS Student Council. I've had so much fun getting to work with students from all grades to represent our school. On Student Council, we work together during weekly meetings to plan fundraisers, pep rallies, and other fun school events. My favorite part of being on Student Council is getting to decorate the homecoming hallway, where each council picks a theme to decorate a section of the school the week of homecoming. The student council community is so welcoming and it's a great way to develop leadership skills and help build school spirit. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eva Kotu and I'm the current president of the STEM club. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. So if you're interested in any of these subjects, you should definitely listen in. Hi everyone, my name is Grace McKenzie and I'm here to promote Interact, which is the largest community service club here at Farmington High School. So what does Indirect do? We volunteer within our school and the Farmington community, as well as the Farmington Valley area. We participate in many activities such as the Union School Boo Bash, the East Farms 5K, the Hartford Road Race, um, the Farmington Food Pantry, Toys for Tots. We send donations um, to troops overseas and we hold various food and clothing drives here at Farmington High School where members can also earn community service hours for participating in activities or bringing in items for those drives. Hello. All right, thank you so much for uh, the presentation department leaders and your attention everyone. So we have throughout this process been collecting the questions from all of you. Let me jump to the next slide real quick. Hopefully it won't play oh. that video again. It's going to want to. All right, and there it is. Welcome to the class of 2025, which is an absolutely wild thing to think about, but we are already in the beginning of the 20s and uh, Soon enough, your students will be graduating from Farmington High School. So very exciting. All right, so the Q&A. So we have looked at the form. Sorry about that earlier, that it wasn't accessible to people outside of the district. That's just how it's programmed. But hopefully uh, you were able to ask your question on there. I know it was plugged again a minute ago in the chat. Uh, so we might see some questions pop up here. Uh, but we are going to try to answer as many of the questions that can address the broad student body as possible. So I will read a question and then direct it to the uh, administrator or department leader that I think would best be able to handle it. Uh, so let's start off with one for Dr. Hurwitz. Uh, the question is regarding the school schedule. Um, is the design of the only four extended block period due to the space constraints of the high school? Um, and what alternatives or accommodations are there in place uh, for students who may struggle with ADHD? Two part question. Thanks, Mr. Mulcahy, and, and thank you for that question. I know we did receive uh, another question around that as well, especially as students from Irving Robbins are transitioning up and are used to, um, you know, 43 minute or 45 minute class period. And so, um, first of all, this was our first year at Farmington High School that we've operated um, with a longer class block. Uh, traditionally, Farmington High School has operated with a nine period uh, day, uh, 42 minutes long. 
Um, this year we transitioned as a mitigation strategy for one reason. Um, why we did so, um, we ended up doing so over the summer and um, you know, in more of a retrofit style to our schedule. We've had uh, tremendous feedback in our current environment with, with this type of schedule. Um, and that's after conducting focus groups with teachers, um, working with families on this through our uh, parent advisory board, as well as um, different student groups, including uh, the principal's advisory council, which is another club um, of the many that I didn't see up there, but I have almost 70 students that sit on the principal's advisory council, which is a group of students that um, I meet with at various times, both in the morning and in the afternoon. Um, and so different groups, including our students, um, have found great success in this model. And this is in a model where movement around the classroom is much less than it will be in a post-COVID world, um, as you all know from your child's experience at Irving Robbins as well, uh, due to the social distancing and mitigation factors that we have to put in place. Uh, the design and structure of lessons in a longer period allows students to go deeper. It also slows the pace of our day. We've received feedback for several years, many, many years on the fast paced day here at Farmington High School. And we're hoping that the longer blocks of time allow students to engage more deeply in their learning, um, along with, again, slowing the pace of the day and allowing for something that we feel is really unique to a high school setting, which is a challenge and support block built into the day as well. Um, that again, we've had in some fa uh, fashion this year. Um, and we're hopeful, again, this schedule also allows us next year to be ready in case there are COVID mitigation uh, strategies that still need to be employed. Um, we're gonna be better prepared for it this year than we were going into last year and feel really good about that. And um, we're excited to offer it. And like I said, have had a great experience um, with our students thus far. Great, thank you, Dr. Hurwitz. Uh, we are gonna shift gears a little bit here and move over to a question for uh, science for Mrs. Shomo. So a attendee is wondering, can you discuss about uh, Project Lead the Way and if this is applicable to freshmen? So, hi everybody. The um, first course in the Project Lead the Way pathway is called Intro to Engineering Design. And um, any ninth grader who is interested in taking that course is um, more than welcome to join it. In fact, we do have some sophomores who take it who haven't taken it freshman year, um, but it does open up a four year pathway for um, learning about engineering. And it's a great program. Great, thank you so much. All right, next question is going over to the fine and applied arts department, Mr. Miner. An attendee is asking, are students required to take an applied arts elective to graduate? Um, well, in my opinion, they should. Um, you know, you get to use uh, applied learning, you know, using tools. Uh, automotive tech, you can get to learn how to do a brake job and change your oil and so forth. Um, however, uh, students are required to take at least nine credits uh, in the STEM area. And the high school graduation requirements are different. If you've went to high school in Connecticut, um, you may have, like the, the setup is a lot, it looks a lot different, but within that nine credits in STEM, um, applied arts uh, courses can satisfy some of those elective portion of that nine credits. All right, I do agree. Many fine classes there in the fine and applied arts um, department. So. Next question is going to go to Mrs. Lundquist. Uh, will students have the opportunity to physically tour FHS before they start in the fall? Hi, everybody. I think I got the crystal ball question. Um, it, it all depends. I think that we take our direction pretty directly from the Farmington Valley Health District. And if we can safely do it, we certainly want to invite your, your children into the building to get familiar with it in the spring. Um, that may or may not be possible. We historically have had a second time when students come in and tour the building, and that's in late August, right before classes begin in September. Um, I think I have a lot more confidence that that one might go forward. I'm a little bit less confident about the one that might happen in the springtime. But we'll figure out some way to get your kids um, acclimated to the school, whether it's virtual or in person, before they actually arrive here. Great, thank you. And I believe the next question is for uh, Ms. Kapczynski, who's in the same room as you. 
So does the ninth grade have any option of doing summer courses? So thank you for that question. Um, uh, yes is the answer. We have an independent study program that students can um, utilize for exploring opportunities outside the walls of Farmington High School. Information on that can be found on page 17 in the program of studies. We do also have a summer learning academy that Summer Learning Academy is open to all students, but it's a credit recovery program primarily. So I'm not exactly sure the intent of the question. So I just wanna make sure I'm answering both pieces. Um, one is a credit recovery program that we do uh, here for our students only. And then if you want learning beyond Farmington High School's um, offerings, I'd, I'd recommend you work very closely with your school counselor who will guide you uh, through uh, the process and uh, examining all of the nuances of that decision that need to be looked at. So again, page 17 in the program of studies is a good place to get a little more information. All right, thank you, Ms. Kovacinci. We are gonna go back over to science with Mrs. Shomo. Um, what will STEM hands-on programming look like next year? Another future uh, glass ball question there. Well, if, it, if, it's, if we're still in the same mode that we are in this year, um, we are still offering students opportunities for numerous hands-on activities. For example, um, in physics this year, uh, the students were asked to design a, a parachute drop for um, an egg, you know, to protect the egg from cracking when it hits the ground. And so that was a hands-on activity that students were doing at home and in school. Um, they're currently working on a project right now, the freshmen, um, a Lego design in a car um, in which there will be a competition. So, um, you know, the, the team of teachers continuously um, try to come up with different hands-on activities for students to be learning about science, um, you know, and we're doing some simulations in which um, we can't necessarily do some of the activities um, due to safety or mitigation strategies. So we will do our best to offer a wide variety of um, options for students. Great, thank you so much. All right, we are gonna shift over to the head of counseling, uh, Ms. Martorelli. The question is, do ninth graders have the option of taking AP? Hi guys, yes. Um, AP courses are primarily offered for students in grades 11 and 12. Um, at this point in your um, research for your rising ninth grader, my best advice would be to reference the program of studies as under each course, it provides a description of the course in addition to um, what years uh, a student is permitted to take that course here at Farmington High School. Um, I would start there and then um, my best recommendation would be to then discuss any individual questions with your students current teachers um, and their school counselor um, and I will note that we up here are in touch with the middle school counselors on a daily basis during this time period. Um, so if they don't have an answer for you, um, then we will be sure to support them um, in, in finding those answers. Um, so that would be my recommendation with um, exploring AP classes um, in the many offerings here at the high school. Great, thank you so much. Our next question is music. Uh, Mrs. Zimsey, if a student has only taken strings. Will they be allowed to take other forms of music at the high school? Thank you, Mr. McClehey. Yes, um, we have many options for enrollment in music and a large, very large portion of the freshman class take music. Um, so yes, students can transfer their skills from strings to you know, other curriculum and other electives. As Mr. Miner said, uh, the arts also um, will be credits for elective credits for humanities and STEM and in music we have a huge community outreach and so your your students can um, certainly can, uh, have innovative practices and performances outside of the school day which is great for them and they will practice in our music practice rooms throughout the day and after school it's a very lively department and they're certainly welcome. Great, thank you, Ms. MZ. Uh, next question is for my immediate daily colleague, um, Mrs. Richmond, head of the social studies department. Um, there were two charts on the social studies slide when you presented it earlier. Uh, why was the chart split uh, 10th, 11th, 12th grade offerings? Uh, why were they split into two sections? And is there a difference in the sections? 
Uh, and is that chart available somewhere? Uh, yes. They were split logistically to fit on the slide, um, but the first chart actually shows the guaranteed course sequence here at FHS. Students need three and a half credits of social studies to graduate. Um, they typically get those from World History One, World History II, um, a US history credit, which is a state requirement, as well as a half credit in government and law. But that's our guaranteed course sequence. Most students go well beyond their three and a half credits in social studies. And the second chart you would have seen would be the elective offerings that they would have, uh, all students grades 10 through 12 have access to. Great, and um, Mrs. Richmond, those are available on the oh, program, program of studies. Course. Yes, they come directly from the program of studies. Thank you. All right, perfect. So that will be, that website will be sent out to you, the one that uh, Mrs. Martorelli discussed earlier. So you will all have access to that website to peruse that. Um, okay, next question is back for Mrs. Martorelli. So we have a, actually quite a few counseling questions coming up in a row here. So uh, mm -hmm. get ready there. Are students automatically signed up in the recommended courses? Um, this family had looked through the system and it seemed already signed up for their student. Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, last Friday, um, IAR parents received a letter, I think, believe, I believe directly from your current school counselors um, stating the process and your responsibility um, as far as what courses you need to request in power school over the next couple weeks. Um, so that said, teacher recommended courses like world language, science, and math have all been imported in. Um, so when you go into class registration, you'll see those classes that have a teacher recommendation already imported as a request. In addition to classes that we know all ninth graders take, such as English 100H, um, Wellness 9, and World History 1. H. So you'll you'll see that according to that letter um, and according for, to your school counselors, um, really the task you have now is to explore and research um, all of the wonderful elective opportunities that we have here at the high school and um, then literally request them in power school. So under class registration, selecting electives, including alternate electives. Uh, so you'll see that as a new feature this year and those are backups. So, and we do that because we cannot guarantee your first choice electives and we schedule those as best as we can as the schedule permits and then we'll explore those backups um, as additional interests your son or daughter has when we're building a schedule um, for each school year. So we do encourage you all to add electives into those alternate um, category as well. Pat, would you like me to keep going? Yeah, so the next question is just sort of discussing the, the physics options for freshmen, uh, particular family had a question about their, their son's recommendation, but what are the two options for physics uh, for freshmen? Yeah, so you'll see that in, in power school, it says physics. So that can be implied as the physics college prep class. And then the other option is physics honors. And if you don't see a science in there or you see a different science, there's always exceptions to um, what kids are scheduled for and recommended for. So if something looks like it's missing there, please reach out to your son or daughter school counselor at IAR. Okay. All right. Uh, we have another one for you. Um, one of the earlier slides mentioned a total of three credits during four uh, years. Is there a minimum or maximum number of credits or subjects that can be taken in a year? And can a student change or add slash drop a subject during the year? So maybe discuss the annual credits um, that are required. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Pat. The best way to answer that is to answer the students are required to select a minimum of 6.5 credits. And those are tallied up as credit hours on that class registration screen. So you'll be able to follow along as you request courses. Um, and a maximum of 7.5 credits. And in, in fact, you will, not, you will not be able to submit the program unless you have a minimum of 6.5 credits requested in there. And it won't let you submit if you have more than 7.5 credits requested. Um, so those are nice features. Regarding an add drop process, we do have one at the high school. Um, so we do have a timeline each year of a very small window at the beginning of a semester for a student to um, drop a course um, or discuss the, the possibility um, of 
a schedule change. And those are conversations that happen on an individual basis, case by case and directly with the school counselor. Um, but there is a process. And, and to really avoid that, we encourage families and everyone to engage in the process of researching courses for next year. So the courses that you are requesting right now are courses that you're really interested in taking. Um, and uh, in doing so, that minimizes any uh, possible uh, scheduled change request um, next school year. Great, and Ms. Martirelli, I, I'm, I'm going to jump down a few while we're seeing there's a couple of questions that came in last yep. minute before the forum had closed. Um, there's, yeah, another, it's just another credit question. So can you just clarify very quickly how many credits are required for the, the full four years? Yeah, absolutely. 25 over. credits over the course of four years. Um, so like I said, a minimum of 6.5 credits each year added times four years, you know, obviously uh, is beyond the 25 credits required for graduation. Um, a year long course is worth one credit, a semester course is a half a credit. Um, your students might be able to teach you a little bit about all of this stuff too, because this was um, directly related to the lesson they had with their school counselors last week, I believe. Um, there's also a video for rising ninth grade families embedded right in that program of studies website, which um, goes through a, a few of these questions a little bit more in detail. Great. Um, and then thank you for that. And then I have one more here that I think is definitely one you can answer. How do you assign students to guidance counselors? Um, do specialized students have different counselor as the regular students? Uh, what's that process? Yeah, like? it's a good question. Um, you know, believing in the fact that having a relationship and a rapport with um, families is, is always something we enjoy. And I think it's beneficial for families as well. Um, we first assign by family. So if you are, have a son or daughter who is already at the high school or has come through the high school, we do our best to um, match you with the same school counselor um, for consistency, um, for the likelihood that a rapport and a relationship is there. And then from there, uh, we break down by alpha order. Um, and there is no, you know, it, it students who receive special education services um, or some of our other services, um, those are all spread evenly amongst um, school counselors. So um, no, special education students do not have a different school counselor than a regular education student. Great, thank you. So I think this, this next one could be answered by uh, a school counselor. Uh, so in this, this case, it could be you, Ms. Martirelli, or it could be uh, Ms. Katsinski. Why is it important for the ninth grader to have study hall? And if they choose to have it, how many electives should they choose? This might get a little bit specific on scheduling, but uh, the importance of study hall is Yeah, ninth so I'll, I'll, I'll start on answering the second question is that um, we are encouraging rising ninth graders to, to schedule in one to two elective credits. Um, so that's two full year courses. Um, that's one full year course or two semester courses. Um, or four different, you know, sem four different semester elective courses. And again, when you're selecting those elective courses right in Power School, those credit hours will be tallied for you. Um, doing so will leave um, students with a, a, some study hall um, likely in their schedule, yet to be determined as far as when and where that looks. Um, and we will work with students individually as far as that goes. What I tend to say, kids who benefit from having um, some free time in their schedule um, because they are busy after school or have a number of commitments outside of school benefit from having some time during their school day. So that's a very individual and important conversation that you have as a family um, and with us as you know, school counselors um, and administrators and department leaders. So uh, we do encourage rising ninth graders to have some time in their schedule that looks um, like a study hall or the challenge and support where they can um, seek resources and supports and uh, on their behalf. So hopefully that sort of answers your question. Thank you. And then we just have, uh, well, one question was, can we get the program of study mailed or sent home with our student? It will be available online. Um, I'm sure that we could, you could send an email if you really wanted a printed copy, but really the website was designed with the intention of having access for everyone uh, and you will have that shared with you. But the last question, uh, Mr. Christ, we're gonna give this one to you. Uh, if someone is taking academic methods, uh, how does that work with A and B days, the block rotation? Will they have it each day for the extra supports? Um, so like all classes, academic methods is taken um, during one of the block periods on either an A or a B day. 
Uh, the course itself teaches students the core skills of writing, inquiry, organization, and collaboration, as these are foundational to success at Farmington High School. Um, there are other um, opportunities for extra help and support, as we discussed earlier in the slideshow, like our Connect um, Challenge and Support Block, uh, to our tutorials, um, and working with teachers after school or in our spa when it's not during COVID. So there are plenty of opportunities for support built into the entire school day for all students. Excellent. All right. So I believe, let me just quick do a quick scan here. Uh, yeah, I believe that is the, the questions that we received via the form. Um, so we have some more pictures here. I don't know if Dr. Hurwitz or any other admin wants to jump on here for the send off. Sure, thanks Mr. Mulcahy. I just wanna take a moment to thank our families of incoming ninth graders for spending time with us this evening. Um, we wish we could see your faces right now. We hope you're smiling. Um, you know, I, I like to say during any transition, um, there's kind of a, a a mix of emotions. It's, you know, there's some nerves and angst because it's something new and there's some excitement because it's something new. Um, and so if you're feeling any of those emotions or a range of those emotions, that's completely normal. Just know that we're here to work with you every step along the way. Uh, our department leaders are experts in their field and um, exceptionally passionate about what they do. And, and that goes for our teachers here, our faculty and staff. We're excited to welcome you to Farmington High School. We wish you and your families a great second half of their eighth grade school year and continue to be optimistic that um, as we move forward into the springtime, our public health conditions will improve. Uh, we thank you for your support. And if a question popped up, um, if a question pops up as you sign off tonight, don't hesitate to email a department leader and administrator. Um, we'd be happy to support you and answer any other questions that, that come your way. Um, and with that, um, any other last comments, folks? Uh, just that uh, this video along with uh, Q&A will be posted on our school website um, probably early next week. And uh, so if anyone missed it that you know of, please, uh, please send them there. And thanks again for coming this evening. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. We would, say, we would say drive safely, but just sign off <laughs> safely and, and have a great evening.